Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Right, this pattern here is a fun one to tie. Uh, usually when I fish mayfly patterns, especially calabatus and still water, as well as rivers for betas, you, you don't want to just have bead heads or weighted flies. Unweighted flies, uh, for a variety of reasons, they sink uh, slower. Uh, they'll, they'll ride in different areas of water. So it's always a good idea to have two different types of uh, weighted patterns for any given style that you're fishing. So this is a uh, style that I use for unweighted situations. This one here is primarily a calabatus that I use in still water. It'll sink slowly and put it right on a fish's nose and kind of stay there without having it plummet to the to the uh, bottom. So we're just going to start out here with some thread and work our way down to the bend of the hook. Or at least the mid part of the bend. This is where we're going to tie everything in. A couple of uh, critical components for this pattern. Hungarian partridge. If you haven't invested in a pelt or a skin, really recommend that you do that. You'll use partridge for a lot of patterns. Nymphs, you can use them on dries for uh, wings or tails. I mean, there's a whole lot of things. I've used them. And uh, so I have got several of these. I've gone through several. This here is a grade number one. And uh, it's got a variety of different color variations and sizes. So. We're going to start off with a, kind of a mid-range feather for the tail and nice segmentation and barring and we'll, we'll snag five to six fibers there to use as our tail. So uh, lengthwise we want it to be about the length of the body so about there. And then on tails, especially these where I've got uh, some tag ends, just to keep a taper consistent, I'm going to come all the way up to the thorax area. And then this is just going to get swallowed up, and then we move back down to that tie-in point. Okay, a lot of the nymphs I tie, I usually have some ribbing and body and, and different materials. And so the one thing to remember when you're tying in a pattern like this as different body materials, the first thing that you tie in here will be the last thing that you bring up. So in looking at the fly, the last thing we bring up with this pattern is going to be the ribbing. And on the ribbing here, I'm just going to use some small copper or copper brown wire. It'll stand out against the body that we're going to use. And as, as you'll see that I do in a lot of my patterns here, and a lot of people do this, you just, you don't want to tie it in just at the butt. You want that tie-in point to be where you've got the material up the whole length of the body so that when we eventually cover that up, it's going to be uniform in its taper. And we only want a couple of wraps down there, again, to conserve space. We don't have a big lump. Okay, so the second to the last thing that we bring up is going to be our uh, tinsel that goes over the back. And this is just some medium-sized brown holographic tinsel from Vivas. And on this, I place that right on the very top of the hook, centered because we're going to bring that over the top of the body and that'll help create some contrast. And then the last thing that we're going to tie in will be the body material itself, which is this uni mylar. And this is a size 12 in the peacock orange. We'll have the peacock be facing up. So the body of this will be a peacock color. Same deal. We want to tie that in so that we can wrap it up the body length. And then what I'll do is I'll bring the thread back down to the original tie-in point so that I'm conserving space there. One more little wrap. And then I'm just going to wrap over the rest of these materials as we go up. And then 
kind of work the way back down halfway and then back up to where that thorax will be right there. And at this point we want to unwind our thread so you rotate it counterclockwise if you're doing this right-handed. And then starting with that last material we tied in, we will bring the uh, mylar up first. And this just creates a segmented or a, a, a nice solid body. And you want to hold that tight and I'll just give that a few wraps to smooth it out right up into the thorax area where I can tie that off. And then we're going to take our brown hollow tinsel and right along the top of the fly there, secure it, pull it tight, give it a good snug wrap, now two or three, and it's going to be just like that, right on the top. Then the final piece is going to be our wire. We've got to make sure that we wrap that on the body, not on the tail, where it'll trap those fibers down. And then just secure the wire. If you've got some of these flush cut wire cutters or some scissors you don't care about, you can come in here and just trim that. You don't want to use your good scissors and Helicoptering does it, but it takes too long. And I'm going to come back over this and be uh, about halfway between the eye of the hook and the point is where I want the thorax to start. Okay, so the uh, thorax is going to consist of some dubbing and then a wing case. And to get the wing case, I'm just going to grab some skinny skin or nymph skin. And I want about, oh, half the width of the hook gap. So we'll just trim that down to that size. So that's about the width that we want. And then we'll take that skin and tie it on the top, making sure it's centered. And I'll go back over it a few wraps just to secure it in there. And now we're going to add our dubbing. Surprise, surprise, more hairy ice dub. This uh, Betis, at least the ones I'm imitating here, a little bit grayer. So this is going to be some gray color for the thorax. And again, if your hands are dry or if this is a dry, humid, non-humid environment, uh, you may need some dubbing wax just to get that to adhere to the thread a little bit. And then we're just going to build up a bit of a thorax here. And we want to leave some space in front uh, right there at the eye because we're going to tie in some legs. So we'll peel off that excess. Okay, what we'll do now is we're going to take our partridge and from the neck, so that'd be the back of the head basically, we're going to grab one of those finer little feathers. Those make great legs. You can see the variations and, and different color combinations there. You're going to strip off the fluff and make a little V-shaped feather shape there. And what I'll do is I'll come and lay that right on top. And you're going to pinch it with your left hand. So I'll lay that in there. Come in with my left hand and pinch that. You want to keep it centered, and this first wrap is going to be soft. The second wrap will be a little soft. And then we want to, if we need to, adjust so that it's still centered. And those are kind of jacked up, but the, the, the nymph skin here is going to split them a little better for us. And that's where you can adjust the length if we need to. So we're going to pull these a little shorter. So you can see that's about what we're looking for there. 
And so I'll take this skin, pull it tight, and then tie that off right there. A couple wraps, and now we'll pull both materials up and then go two wraps underneath. Tighten those down and then we gotta trim these off. Having some good sharp scissors will help you there. Now we just got to clean up the head. So I'm going to pull these legs back and build up a little head to clean that off. And then we can whip finish. And the final step is take some fluorescing UV clear fly finish and hit the thread with that and then the, the uh, wing case. Just a thin coating and then we'll zap it. And that is a super effective mayfly pattern.